Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you for checking me out. My name is Eko Simpson. I'm a Ghanaian and I live in Ghana. Well, you are watching this channel because somebody introduced you to it. It was recommended or suggested to you on YouTube. Basically, my YouTube channel is to connect Africans and the motherland to Africans in the diaspora. Thank you for checking me out. If this is your first time of watching my videos, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. So in 2020, um, I saw most people Ghanaians celebrating the festival and all that. I also read on, on I have witnessed one that, that was 2019 in One Africa. Uh, there's a celebration by the people of the African diaspora called Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. I, I might not know much about Kwanzaa. Maybe you would. I, I want you to brief me and then my cameraman and other people who are watching what Kwanzaa is all about. Okay, Kwanzaa, interestingly enough, I don't know his uh, previous name, but Kwanzaa was developed by Milana Karenga. Okay. It was part of his college dissertation. It was an assignment. assignment. Okay. He created Kwanzaa as a cultural development celebration that was a homework assignment. So he was in school and he developed this concept while in school. And Kwanzaa was designed by him to fit conveniently in between the celebrations that African Americans would already be engaged in, Christmas and New Year's. So he positioned Kwanzaa to begin the day after Christmas mm -hmm. when African Americans are already in this celebrating mode. They're already on holiday from work or school is closed for the Christmas vacation. So it was a seven day celebration to help to retrain the thinking of diasporan people. So it had seven principles, mm -hmm. unity, self-determination, collective working responsibility, uh, cooperative economics, purpose, faith, and reciprocity, I believe. <laughs> so each day was devoted to one of these concepts. And the message of Kwanzaa was from the beginning, it hasn't caught on exactly like he envisioned but it's no different than Ghana hasn't caught on to what Nkrumah envisioned either. So, so, but the idea was you take these seven days and you practice this principle. On, you show what the principle is about on the 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st, the first. Uh, and first is faith. Nia uh, uh, is, is the final day. Of, uh, I mean, Imani, the final day of Kwanzaa, of faith. <coughs> so that'll be the first, tomorrow. So the idea was you would take these seven concepts. Each one have, was supported by the symbolism of a canaro with seven candles, yeah. three red, one black, three green. The black one is unity. Mm -hmm. You start off with the unity. The black candle symbolizes the black people. Yeah. And it, the first principle is unity to symbolize what the black people need yeah. is unity. If you have unity, all the rest would take care of itself. And then you alternate from the red candle, green candle, red candle, green candle. And each candle represents one of the concepts. The three colors, red, black, and green, are reminiscent of and symbolic of Marcus Garvey's flag that he discovered that everybody in the world has a flag except black people don't have a flag. So he, he created the red, black, and green flag. The black standing for the, the people, the red standing for the blood that's been shed over all of these years, and the green standing for the prospects of future yeah. prosperity. So Kwanzaa has these same colors. And Kwanzaa has other implements, just like African rituals. They have implements, every implement is symbolic, you have the canara, the candle holder, you have the candles themselves, you have the straw mat, you have the corn, the same corn you eat every day. You have the corn which shows production and, and fruitfulness. You have books that show literature and learning and thinking. So and you have the, the tablecloth that covers things. So 
when you do Kwanzaa, you have these components. Not unlike any African rituals that you do, you have all the necessary components. So Kwanzaa was designed to help African people in the diaspora to recognize a holiday or a series of holidays, a festival almost, in between Christmas and New Year's okay. that would hopefully lead to you making sound New Year's resolutions about what you're going to do different. Okay. Unfortunately, Kwanzaa in too many ways has become ceremonial mm -hmm. without the substance of yeah. what is supposed to or was designed to happen. But it's not different than a lot of churches yeah. that are ceremonial and nothing happens that is talked about or cultural traditions that are, you have a big parade or a festival and after the, uh, after Panifest, everybody goes back to doing the same thing they did before they did Panifest. So, so Overcast University is designed to not just talk about the concepts, but make the substance of the school reflective of the concepts so that people can internalize them learn and grow from them and pass them on and it's new year 2021 what is your message to african diaspora and africans on the motherland as well because i i always ask people to give message to the african diaspora but we also need to give messages to the africans on the motherland so what is your message for this new year 2021 yeah, one message for both mm -hmm. and it's been so much time that we've been separated that in some very f oh that in some very fundamental ways we've been separated and estranged from each other so long that we don't know we're in the same family the ancestors were taken away from <laughs> primarily from the Ghana uh, dungeons to sail across the ocean uh, 20 generations ago so 20 generations ago when captive prisoners were forced to board ships and sail away, they knew at that moment that they were part of the African family that was on this continent. But it's been 20 generations since that happened. And so we've all been trained to think about this event differently. So now when diasporans return here, they think that Ghanaians are a different people that they're meeting. Yeah. When in fact, these are your family members that you haven't seen for 20 generations. And in the interim, you've been taught that these people over there are some other people. And you believe that. So you come here with the idea that those Ghanaians and us, when it's actually we, so the same is true with Ghanaians. When you meet people from the diaspora, these are not other people that have been living someplace. These are the descendants, just like you are right now. You're the descendants of 20 generations of people that stood on the shore and saw ships sailing and they were crying about the people that were on those ships. You may not know who they were, yeah. but you are the, the, the son of someone that might have been taken away from here. And so when I come back, I could be your cousin. <coughs> yeah. That's the way we have to look at ourselves. We are in the same one family. That's what Pan-Africanism is about. We see ourselves as members of one family, the, the black African family. We are members of that family. So. We have to look out for each other because we're members of that family. So Ubuntu applies to us as a Pan-African. So when we say, well, we have CCTU, and then there's Florida uh, A&M University, well, that's, that's Ubuntu. That's Pan-Africanism because we can get CCTU, and if you can join us, then we can make this happen because we can do anything. And I want to say that in a way that sounds convincing. We can do anything if we were united and working together. And I mentioned at, at when I first met uh, the Vice Chancellor of, of CCTU, he asked me about the word excellence. I said, well, excellence, it may sound like it's bragging about something that doesn't exist. 
and there would be no way you could say excellence. Yeah. But the word excellence refers to our anticipation of what will happen as soon as you and I work together. Yeah. Yeah. The excellence is what's going to be produced for everybody to see. Yeah. So in 2021, I would say anybody coming, come to, to Ghana looking for your relatives because that's who's here. And I would say to Ghanaians or anyone else in the, on the African continent, is when you see people from the diaspora, you're looking for your relatives because that's who they are. The fact that you don't know they're your relatives and they don't know that you're their relatives is only because they've been taught not to understand that. <laughs> so that would be my message for a New Year's resolution. Come to Ghana looking to learn, not learn, not learning to be a boss of somebody mm -hmm. and not acting like you're coming with some great ideas and the people that you're talking to don't have great ideas because I say to people all the time well Ghanaian people have survived colonialism and uh, Ghanaian people believe it or not are, are more wealthy than you sure. they don't understand that <laughs> and they, they say I said well you know, Ghanaian people are, are more well off than you are in the States. They say, well, how could that be? Because I have, a, I have this, I have that. I say, yeah, but everything you have, unlike Ghanaians, if you have a car, it's not a car that you own. It's on credit. It's on credit. Yeah. If you go to a house, it's not a house that you own. Yeah. It's a house that you pay monthly to the bank. Mm -hmm. And if you miss paying, the bank comes, takes the house and put all your things up. So every Ghanaian that you see goes home, they own that house. Yeah. If they get in a car, they own that car. So the bottom line of Ghanaians is more positive than the bottom line. The net assets of Ghanaians is more than the net assets of 99% of the diaspora. Because it's all credit. Mm -hmm. That's why they're really complaining now. <laughs> because the government has said you don't have to pay rent for six months because of COVID. COVID yeah. Yeah, but yeah. the six months is over tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> So now you're going to have to be evicted because you don't have the money to pay the six months that's due. So all the people are going to be put out. Here, I don't care what happens with COVID. When you go home, nothing that happens with, because of COVID-19 is going to mean that you have to move out of your house. So your bottom line is stronger. You're freer. And so that's what every diasporan feels when they come here too. I feel totally free here. Uh, so I would say to people, don't, don't try to overthink it. Come to Ghana, see for yourself, look for your brothers and sisters because they're looking for you as their brothers and sisters. And together, through the Pan-African spirit, Ubuntu and Azotzi, we can make a new African world for all of us. So with this too, we can make uh, Africa new for all of us. So thank you very much for checking us out. If this is your first time of checking my video out, kindly click on the subscription button and be part of this beautiful family. Thank you very much for checking us out.